Hi. <laughs> Can you guys hear Hi. me? Yes. Amazing. How's it going? Yourself? Good. Nice to see your faces. Tyler, <laughs> I've, I don't think we've ever actually connected over video. So good. No, it's nice to put a face to the name for sure. That's right. How's everyone doing? I'm doing well. Pretty good. Pretty good, thank you. Good. Surviving the pandemic? <laughs> Hi. <Yes. laughs> Adjusting. <laughs> I know. I feel um, like we're all just kind of ready for the summer and everything to open back up again and some sort of normalcy. At least I am. I'm getting, uh, getting a little stir crazy. Yes, yes honestly. Sure. Missing uh, that interaction <laughs> with people. That, that's right. In real life, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to remember how to, I don't know, socialize yeah. <laughs> with my friends. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, how's your week been? Uh, good. It's, it's a busy, busy-ish time. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think we're just kind of every, I work on the Olympics. So like every day for us is some new headline around is Tokyo going to happen? Is it not? What's going on? So we're on mm -hmm. a bit of a roller coaster as it relates to, um, that side of things. Um, but we're, we're optimistic. And actually today they just released a, the um, IOC just released, I guess, their playbook for how they're going to deliver the games safely um, to athletes and, you know, all of the protocols that will be in place. So I guess that's, that's a good sign, meaning that they actually do have those kind of all of the relevant guardrails and protocols in place. Um, so we're optimistic at this point um, that everything's going to still happen. No more cancellations, no more postponements. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to keep all of our athletes safe. Yeah, definitely. That's important to keep everyone safe, but it's good to hear that we're optimistic. I know everyone's missing sports in that competition. So really hope it can continue and roll through for sure. That's the hope. I think the Olympics is going to be the perfect time for Canadians and really the whole world to sort of rally around each other and, and unite again and have something to really celebrate because it's been a really difficult um, past year. Um, so I think that's the hope is that this is really going to be a moment in time where everyone can kind of celebrate, relax, decompress and cheer on our favorite athletes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So we can jump right into it. We kind of skipped the introductions, but Brooklyn and Madeline are our events team on Shima. Um, right. We thank you, not only us three, but our entire club. Thank you for doing this. Uh, we really appreciate your time, especially in a busy kind of few months for yourself. So without further ado, I think I'll just kind of shoot it to the girls and they can kind of get things started. Awesome. Yeah, so for our first question, um, we see that you graduated from Penn State, played high-level soccer, worked in positions such as brand coordinator, brand specialist, and leading into your current position of senior manager of brand marketing. Does that all sound correct? That's absolutely <laughs> accurate. You guys okay. checked out my LinkedIn. I love yes, it. Yes, we did do some research. <laughs> so <laughs> first, congratulations on your new role. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um, no problem. Do you mind just elaborating on your path from university and kind of how it led you to where you are today? Absolutely. Um, I think the theme for my journey in the sports world thus far is really passion um, and a lifelong love of athletics and that sort of pursuit of excellence in the field and on the field, pun intended. Um, <laughs> I was a soccer player all my life from the age of four and at 16 I was lucky enough to have had um, several scholarship opportunities for Division One schools in the States. Um, I ultimately chose Penn State, uh, where I spent my undergrad studying communications and business while also leading the varsity soccer team as a captain. Um, but I suffered a lot of injuries along the way, which is ultimately what made me hang up the cleats after university and shift my focus to starting my professional career. Um, so I returned home to Canada and I did what probably you guys and, and many of your peers and anyone watching this video later on are doing, which is networking, coffee chats, 
taking any and every opportunity to sort of meet with industry experts and leaders in the field and get my face and name in front of people. And in those meetings, my priority was first, just to make a great long lasting impression. And then second, to get another meeting, whether it was with um, that person or someone they were gonna introduce me to, those were kind of my, my two uh, goals heading into those sessions. And ultimately that approach did pay off for me. Um, I was able to make a good impression on the head of marketing at Sportsnet, so Rogers Media at the time. And I got lucky with timing as they had just acquired the um, exclusive rights to the National Hockey League in that huge $5.2 billion um, media deal, which you guys might remember. Um, so that meant that they were staffing up across many of their teams, marketing being one of them. Um, and so I started off as a coordinator there on the brand marketing team. and consider myself really lucky to have been um, pretty much thrown right into the mix right away. I was, I can remember being um, only a few weeks into my, my job and I was, you know, on set at commercial shoots with Sidney Crosby and Jonathan Taves and Zidane Ochara. Um, I was helping to create promotional strategies for Hockey Night in Canada back in the Ron and Don days. Um, and then I was helping to launch the first season of Rogers Hometown Hockey, which included hockey festivals that were set up in different local communities across Canada every weekend. And then the Sunday remote broadcast with Ron McLean and Tara Sloan. Um, so eventually from there, I was promoted to specialist and my portfolio expanded as well with uh, more of a purview across the CHL, the CWHL, so the Women's Hockey League, NBA and Raptors, and also in addition to those NHL properties. Um, I say fast forward, you know, after almost four years at Sportsnet, I, I was ready for a change. And I felt that ultimately my long-term growth as a professional in the industry would probably require me to shift into a different environment and, and really grow my skill set in new ways. So once again, through a series of informal networking chats and meetings um, and, a, and a thorough interview process, I was offered a brand marketing role at RBC that was too good to turn down for me. Um, I'd, I'd be managing their Olympics portfolio and their roster of 50 plus um, sponsored athletes as a former national team athlete myself. So it was kind of the dream job that I couldn't turn down. Um, so fast forward to today, it's been three years at RBC where I've held the titles of manager and now senior manager brand marketing. And I'm really proud to work on some of the most impactful athlete programs um, in the country. And I can say that because I didn't invent the programs, but I now help to help to lead them. Um, the RBC Olympians program and RBC training ground, if anyone watching wants to Google them and you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, oh, here's my pup saying hi. Um, <laughs> and then I also manage RBC's uh, mass marketing campaign efforts around each Olympic Games, which are, um, you know, we're the longest standing corporate supporter of Team Canada since 1947. So it's a pretty big deal at the bank and I'm lucky to be in a, in a position where I can help kind of make those kind of strategic decisions. Yeah, that sounds incredible. A lot of, a lot of experiences here. Um, so we appreciate you explaining all of that. One thing that I, it was only small from what everything that you said, but one thing that I really liked that you said was the networking aspect, because I think sometimes a lot of people forget about how important that is um, and just being persistent on, okay, so I made a good impression. Now let's take a step further to show that you're truly interested. Um, and then, then they get to know your face, they get to know your name. So if opportunities arise, then they're, they will be like, hey, I remember this person. Let's see if they'd be interested. Um, or if you just apply, they're like, yes, I recognize this name. So I really appreciate that comment that you made about networking. It's, it's truly and very important to do so. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And throughout these interviews, we hear that a lot. Um, and that shows that uh, these informal meetings and chats, um, it really works. It, you know, puts your name out there. Um, you get these opportunities. So absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I know you touched a little bit upon um, marketing and what you do. So that leads into our next question. When involved with marketing, the one thing that I'm currently learning in my marketing class is to understand who our targets are. Um, so how do you ensure that you're incorporating inclusivity and diversity when targeting and marketing for your brand so as to ensure everyone feels welcome and included? Yeah, I, I, I love that question. It's a really great one. Um, and it's something that's very top of mind for 
our entire department and our organization at RBC. Um, I think first what's great about the athlete programs that I work on and that I mentioned um, is that we're targeting elite athletes who are at the top of their game, regardless of where they live in Canada, what their socioeconomic status is, their gender, their race. Um, and in fact, this year we shifted RBC Training Ground, which is our next gen talent identification program to an all virtual format, which means we're literally giving young athletes from every corner of the country a chance to be scouted by the Olympic team. Um, so long as they have an internet connection, that's really the only sort of uh, precursor. So that's our strategic approach, but we're also always cognizant of the stories that we're telling and the athletes we're profiling within our mass campaigns and our integrated branded content um, across the various platforms where we show up. So representing the BIPOC community is a huge focus. Ensuring that 50% or more of these stories profile girls and young women is a huge focus. Um, and we've set actual targets and benchmarks for success to ensure that we're delivering on this promise. Um, and we also work with an internal DNI panel, so a diversity and inclusion panel that is now vetting all of our creative assets before they're pushed out to the public to ensure that RBC's voice, our tone, and the people or featured talent that are represented in those spots and in those creative assets are done so in the right way, in, in a um, very diverse and inclusive way. So not only is this approach core to our values as a brand, but it makes for better content, period. That's sort of, you know, um, the, the, the core of it. So Canada is one of the most diverse countries in the world. Um, so if our programs and our marketing campaigns don't reflect that, we have failed. Um, so that's what we're looking at. We set out to do um, across everything that we're putting out into market um, these days. Absolutely. I love to hear that. It's so great that um, all these different initiatives and stuff focusing on diversity and inclusion. Um, and especially I like that you mentioned that Canada is such a diverse country and it's important to to show that on the Olympic level, on the Olympic stage, when we have um, people looking up to these Olympians, you know, um, making sure that there's someone there that, you know, looks like them. So I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, everything I was thinking Madeline just touched upon, but one thing that um, I would also like to mention too, is that diversity truly enhances the organization as a whole. So it's, it's truly great to hear what you and your company have been doing for for your organization, but for everyone as well to feel welcome and included. Um, and speaking of women and maybe younger women and girls, our next question kind of relates to that, um, being women in sports. So Madeline and I are finishing up um, a research project that discusses the lack of women in leadership roles and participation in sport. So more specifically, women are perceived as less than men and lack the skills to successfully lead. So being a woman in sport yourself and now placed in a very well-earned leadership role, have you ever felt excluded or had any feelings of inadequacy because of any reasons such as your gender? Yeah, another good question. And I can say I absolutely have felt those feelings before. Um, I'd say particularly when I was more junior in my career, it was intimidating being the only woman in the room more often than not um, and frustrating when my male colleagues would you know, talk over me or represent my ideas as their own. Um, I can also remember receiving feedback about being too social, I think, social at work when my male counterparts would be complimented as sort of savvy businessmen or great collaborators for kind of conducting themselves in the same way. Um, so I think the way that I combated that was finding the right opportunities to use my voice at sort of opportune moment. So I didn't have to be the loudest one in the room for the sake of it, but adding value and leaning on my expertise to ask really thoughtful questions and offer up strategic solutions where I saw fit. Um, I, I also was very lucky to have had some great allies and mentors, both male and female, who helped to instill confidence in me and, and sort of shaped who I am today as a leader. Um, having those those key people that are really in your corner that have your back and can offer advice based on their own experiences and even 
be a champion for you and your continued development is is so so important um so that really gets back to i think that your earlier point around you know networking being important but equally important or even more important is mentorship and and having those those allies yeah definitely um i'm glad that you mentioned the mentorship aspect because i think sometimes that is missed um but mentors can truly help you develop and as you said instill confidence in yourself especially when you've dealt with these unfortunate circumstances. And I think for myself in particular, it's always about being challenged if I actually know the correct information, um, if I'm truly into sports or if I just like looking at men and I just don't understand why that's even a comment, but it happens, right? So, and I think that's just become so normalized for myself until I came actually to this program and I walked in and a majority is, is men and I found maybe a few, few girls in there. Um, But to me, I was like, oh, that's normal, because I've just dealt with that my whole life. But then, especially joining Shima, too, is really showing me, like, it's not, if it's not okay. Um, So I appreciate that, and that's kind of relates back to the mentorship. I've had to work with such a great group of people, um, and everyone has each other's back, and we're all supportive. So it definitely makes a big difference, too. Awesome. Um, I'll jump forward to the next one. Now that you recently completed uh, Yale School Management Women in Leadership program, I want to hear your thoughts on one, how the program was in terms of kind of the experience that it brought you. And then how do you see that educational experience impact your career in your current leadership role and then beyond? Um, Yeah, so I I just completed, as you said, the Yale Women's Leadership program. It was amazing. It was a Um, eight week kind of accelerated curriculum that covered topics like values driven leadership. Um, There was self knowledge and self mastery, um, leading growth through experimentation and structures of innovation. Um, And I think first it was just very cool to sort of use my brain in a slightly different way. I've been out of school for I guess almost eight years. And so it's nice to kind of be back in that classroom setting and challenging myself in, in different ways. But I think one of the major lessons that I took from the course was how to keep my personal values at the forefront of every decision um, that I make both at work and at home. Um, And also how to combine those values with my strengths as, you know, a business professional and and, and leader to positively impact others. Um, I think, you know, when faced with tough circumstances that derail your plans, i.e. COVID-19, like, the last year or adversity due to market challenges or internal budget cuts. Um, That's when having that strong foundation of core values like empathy, um, integrity, inclusivity, like we just talked about, resilience. Um, That's when those values come into play and really ensure that you're able to lead your team through those tough times and come out even stronger um, on the other side. Um, I think the the one other great theme that maybe I'll touch on is um, innovation and experimentation. I, I, essentially, in order to grow, you need to have the proper networks and processes in place to experiment, to try new things, um, to fail sometimes, and then ultimately to learn from it. And that might not seem that groundbreaking, but I think oftentimes in the corporate world, you get very caught up in um, the bureaucracy and, and the red tape and the, you know, this is how it's always been done mentality so that you can lose sight of that really critical ability to think differently and to test and learn. Um, so I've literally written down and discussed with my manager um, that one of my professional development goals for this year is to be more innovative and to take more risks. Um, even if it means failing some, sometimes, which can be uncomfortable, but that's really the the space you need to be to to drive growth. Nice. Definitely. That yeah. sounds really interesting. Um, all the different points you touched on. I especially like the what you just spoke about um, last there, um, that it's okay to fail. Um, and it's hard. Um, it's really hard to fail or to not succeed at something you're trying so hard in. But um, it's definitely important to learn how to fail um, properly so that you can pick yourself back up again and learn from that experience. I think a lot of people um, don't think it's okay to fail, but I think it's definitely a learning experience and, and that's definitely important. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Madeline. I was just going <laughs> to make a comment. That's the one but... thing that's so hard about these online things. It's it's so hard to tell when someone's going to talk, and it's uh, yeah. so good to do this. <laughs> it happens sorry. all the time in our in our meetings day to day, too. Or you try um, to make a joke, and it's totally, like, fails because you're talking <laughs> over someone, or they didn't hear what you said. Yeah, this is the whole process. Sometimes it like it'll lag and then I'll wait to finish, but then it it actually just leaves like a few seconds of silence. But that was not, not the intention. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, but yeah, I just I just appreciate you talking about that. It sounds like something I would really like to look into uh, myself. Um, but just talking about the whole failing aspect just rem- reminded me of um, the late Kobe Bryant, and he said that if something went wrong in a game, he was immediately watching the film and figuring out what he could do to develop. And it's true, There's, it's okay to feel a little uncomfortable or upset, but it's ultimately what we do with that, right? If we're gonna stay in the same place or if we're going to try to improve. So anyways, sorry, Madeline, I just wanted to make that comment. Okay, but so Absolutely, I like that you brought up that as well. Um, so that leads us into our next question. So we would love to hear what advice you have for young women looking to have a leadership role in or out of the sport industry. Um, great question. I think, first of all, excuse my French, but hell yeah, we want and need more <laughs> female leaders in the sport industry. Um, we are starting to see the tides change at the professional level um, with coaches, assistant coaches, refs, and sort of other front office jobs being filled by amazing, talented, credible, qualified women, which is awesome. Um, and there's certainly more gender diversity across you know, the brand marketing and sort of brand sponsorship teams within the Canadian sports industry that I'm a part of, which is also a good thing. But we can and should and will do better. Um, and that starts with anyone who may be watching this video um, being, I would say, relentless in pursuing their passions. So, you know, you need to know that it's going to be uncomfortable at times. There will be days where you feel inadequate, like we just talked about, or like you're not being taken seriously or that you're being wrongly judged um, before you even open your mouth. But know that there will also be some incredible days where maybe you come up with a strategy that will see more black and indigenous youth have access to high performance sport resources um, or you sell through a sponsorship idea to senior executives at your company that will ensure female hockey players can continue to chase their dreams of playing pro in Canada. Um, so those days will reinforce that you made the absolute right decision to pursue a career in this field and will ensure that future generations have even far greater opportunities. And I think that's kind of the thing you always need to remember um, as you're forging your own path. Yeah, very nicely said. I'll definitely take that advice with me for my whole life and <laughs> try to implement that as well. So thank you for that. And I'm sure everyone else that will watch will um, thank you as well for that advice. So. Um, this was our last question, um, but we love to ask this to all of our participants. What is your favorite part about your job? And it could be more than one. Um, favorite part. So I think it's probably a very cliche answer, but it's hands down the people. Um, both in my time at Sportsnet and now at RBC, I've had the pleasure of meeting and working with some of the most genuine, smart, inspiring, and hilarious individuals who I now call good friends. And it makes those tough days when you're grinding it out at the office or at your at-home office um, mm-hmm. easier. And it makes the good days that much better and kind of worth celebrating with your team. So I think especially now um, during this pandemic, I've really realized how much I do cherish those real authentic relationships that I've built with my teammates and, you know, we all actually do care about each other and we want what's best for one another, both professionally and personally, um, which I think is pretty special. So shout out to my teammates. If, if any of them happen to tune into this, um, they know who they are, but yeah, it's got to be the people. There's some phenomenal um, kind of smart strategic minds within the industry. Mm-hmm. Yes. I like that. I like that answer. Those long lasting relationships can truly make a difference in your day for sure. And I like that you mentioned that, you know, 
we're all trying to succeed. We all have each other's backs and want to lift each other up. So that's really nice. It's as if you're, you're growing together. So that's really nice that you mentioned that. Absolutely. I think it's the people that really make the difference. Um, Like even working within Shima, honestly, I did not know any of these people, but you know, working together, kind of working towards the same goal um, and you really grow and build those relationships and just work on some pretty great things together. So um, the people definitely make a difference. I also want to say I love what you guys are doing. So it's awesome that you guys have come together as this group and um, for a really worthy, meaningful cause and looking forward to continuing to follow kind of all of your, your group's activity and everything that you're doing with Shima in the future. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're very fortunate that we get to be a part of this. So thank you. Um, but yeah, so that was our last question. Before I end it, did you have any questions for us? I don't think so. Maybe maybe one question I would just ask is what are you guys most excited about? Um, maybe that's upcoming for Shima or, you know, plans that you have for 2021. Yeah. When you're on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have, so we do, there's one event that I'm really looking forward to in March. It's just, we haven't put it out there yet. Okay. <laughs> so I'm a little hesitant on talking okay. about that one. Um, Stay tuned. But we, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We do have a, um, a really nice event coming up in March, which will be great and involves industry professionals again, and cool. the chance to do some things there. So that is what I'm yeah. really looking forward to <laughs> for awesome. sure. Um, yeah, we have um, another event coming up in this month, actually. And it's for our peer-to-peer partnership program. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're going to have a little just entertaining night and just meeting meeting more people. We know it's really hard to make connections and meet other peers, especially um, coming into, say, your first year. And maybe you don't know anyone like it was me. I didn't know anyone going into Brock University. So we just wanted to build a safe environment for everyone to meet each other and just kind of have a fun night. So that's kind of a little explanation for this <laughs> end of this year, but yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, don't want to take too much of your time. So thank you so much for coming on again. We truly appreciate it. And um, we know you're super busy. So um, thank you again for coming on and sharing your experiences. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. And I'm looking forward to, I guess, where, where will you end up posting this video? Is it on your social platforms? Yeah, so we actually have a YouTube channel that we um, will post the full interview. And then we also do have an Instagram that we basically promote our our video. We'll have like short little clips and then direct you to the YouTube channel. Awesome. Looking forward to it. No problem. All right. Well, thanks, team. Thanks again, Lexi. It was nice to meet you all and uh, looking forward to staying in touch. Sounds good. Yes, it was nice to meet you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.